Hello and a very warm welcome to Cultural Communication Confidence with me, Victoria Reynoldson. And first of all, a very happy new year, uh, particularly if you're listening to this at the beginning of January. It's now 2023 and if you have been taking holiday over the festive season, I hope that you had a lovely time. Myself, I equally also took some time off. Um, I had some holiday with my family here in London and I'm feeling refreshed and energized. I also took the time over the holiday to really think about and reflect on the last year and also think about the coming year, what's coming up. And for me, that's been very helpful to plan my objectives, to think about what it is I wanna achieve this year. And as part of that process, I created a couple of episodes recently on the podcast, which were all about this, how to reflect on your communication performance and set your own performance goals for communication in 2023. So if you haven't had the chance to listen to those episodes, uh, that is episode 14 and episode 15, please feel free to go back and do that now. But today's topic is really setting us off with the agenda for 2023. And what I wanted to talk about were the five big ideas that I think will really make the difference to you personally and to your teams when thinking about communication and cultural intelligence capabilities this year. So I've gathered all the insights and really reflected on what I think you need to pay attention to and will really make that difference to your own performance, whether individually or as the collective team and will make that difference to how your uh, business is performing and how you are growing as a business as well. So I'm gonna get in straight into these five ideas. So the first one is that global teams will succeed when they build an equal share of voice for all. Now, I'm very passionate about this idea because it's something that I feel that many global teams don't really acknowledge that when you have people with different language backgrounds, different cultural backgrounds, that sometimes it's not always easy for everybody to communicate and express themselves to the same level and really be able to express their views and ideas clearly. Now, that's something that we often don't acknowledge and we assume that people can unmute themselves and just say what they think in a meeting. Um, but that requires confidence. And what I find sometimes is that there's a uh, balance which is not quite working, where the most dominant voices, the most extrovert people are communicating, perhaps those quieter individuals or those people who don't feel so comfortable culturally to com communicate in the way that others are expecting of them are not fully contributing. So I think the difference that will be made in global teams is if they really think about how they encourage everybody to contribute in the ways that are comfortable to them, these global teams will really succeed this year. So that's the first trend. Global teams will succeed when they build an equal share of voice for all. The second trend is about a communication strategy for virtual and hybrid. I know that we have been operating uh, in virtual mode and hybrid mode for many of us for many years already. But the reality is we're often not very intentional about it. And because it's become sort of the usual way of doing things, we don't really pay attention to it anymore and, and being conscious of how we do things. What is really interesting was that I found a report recently on LinkedIn that spoke about how important the informal communication is within meetings. And actually, this really makes a big difference to team connection and engagement, but in fact can have a huge impact on business results as well. If I just read here, it said that the recent report said that managers who leave five to 15 minutes at the end of hybrid meetings for open conversation ends up with less misalignment between senior and junior staff and have faster onboarding to projects. So I think that's quite significant. So the key question to ask yourself really here for you and your team is, do you have a communication strategy in place for your virtual meetings and your hybrid meetings? 
Are you really thinking about how you're communicating with each other formally and informally and allowing that time for small talk? Are you making sure you have that time for the connection, which is not just about personal connection, but it's also about the team and business results as well. So that's the second one, a communication strategy for virtual and hybrid. The third topic for me is really about cultural intelligence, not just awareness, will make the difference. Now, what do I mean by this? Now, cultural awareness, of course, is important. We need insights to understand how different cultures operate, whether we are working with culturally diverse teams in one country, we're working with many different countries around the globe, or we're working externally maybe with customers or suppliers who are international. But that awareness only takes us so far. And that's why I'm quite passionate about the idea of cultural intelligence capabilities and building your own capabilities in this area and your team's capabilities. And if I share with you the key factors which are important in this, according to the Cultural Intelligence Centre, which I'm certified in, then these really are about your motivation, your drive, how culturally driven are you, how motivated are you to really uh, build personal success, team success, and business success through diverse cultural situations. It's also clearly about the awareness that is important, but we need awareness by itself isn't enough. We need to take it further. So we need to take it into a strategy that we try out and see if it works. And we need to have action. We need to turn that into actions that we, we create and then reflect on to see if they've worked or not. This is the difference that businesses will have, their edge, when they really take this approach to be culturally intelligent rather than just taking the awareness route. So that's the next one, third one. Cultural intelligence, not just awareness, will make the difference. The fourth trend is about the new rules for meetings. I, similar to, I suppose, virtual and hybrid, I think that um, meetings have substantially changed in the last few years. And yet I find that for some clients that I work with, um, whether those are individuals or teams, things haven't really kind of really shifted. Actually, they've gone back to normal. So I really like to challenge people about this. And I think the people who really challenge themselves on this topic will really have a big impact in 2023. So ask yourself, why are we having a meeting? What is the point of it? And would it work in another way? So for example, to communicate asynchronously, which means communicating over documents or um, over a a platform like Slack or Trello, rather than having to put another physical meeting in the diary. So really challenge yourself about this. Do you need another meeting? If you decide you do, then get super clear what this meeting is about. Who needs to be there? Absolutely, not everybody, but who absolutely needs to be there? What is the topic and what are the key agenda items? It's better to under plan than over plan and try and squash too much into the meeting. Be clear about the amount of time that you need. Don't just default to an hour. That's just a waste of everybody's time. And think about the creative ways to make the meeting work, Um, whether that's about the creative tools that you use, getting people to stand or move around to get the energy moving. And let's not forget the actions at the end. So that's the fourth trend, the new rules for meetings. So really ask yourself that question. Are you being challenging enough about how you're running meetings this year? And finally, the fifth trend, connection through your nonverbal communication. I particularly feel that we don't pay enough attention to our nonverbal communication. And that could be our tone of voice, how we sound, it could be our facial expressions, our hand gestures, how we move our bodies. And I think it's even more important when we're doing a lot of virtual or hybrid meetings that we pay attention to this. When we do this, we have the real opportunity to create energy in our meetings, to build our presence, particularly in virtual meetings, and to get the engagement going in the meeting as well. And that's a real game changer. So I think if we pay attention to our nonverbal communication, how we do things and how we communicate, 
as much as what we say, then we have that opportunity to really make the difference. So that was the fifth one, connection through your nonverbal communication. So as we come to the end of this episode, I really want you to reflect on these five key trends. Just as in summary, I'll run through them again. They are global teams will succeed when they build an equal share of voice for all. A communication strategy for virtual and hybrid. Cultural intelligence, not just awareness, will make the difference. The new rules for meetings and connection through your nonverbal communication. Which of these big ideas are you gonna focus on or your team are gonna focus on to really make that difference to your communication and cultural impact this year? What other ideas have you got that will also make that difference to how you're communicating for your own performance, for your team performance, and for your business and career? I would love to know. So I would love to know what you think of these, what your own uh, action plan is coming out of this uh, particular episode. So please feel free, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, My personal profile is the best way to contact me. Um, I'm Victoria Reynoldson over there. And remember, as we come into 2023, if you feel that communication and cultural intelligence capabilities are an area that you need support on this year to make that difference to your own performance as an individual or team, then come talk to me about the coaching and training programs that I do around these topics. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you've enjoyed this episode and you think it's been useful for you, I was wondering whether you would do a favor. Why not share it with a friend or a colleague, somebody who you think would also benefit from hearing about these big ideas for communication and cultural intelligence for this year? Um, It'd just be great to be able to share the the word and also get other ideas um, from others and get this conversation going for 2023. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been great to see you again at the start of 2023. And I look forward to seeing you next time on Cultural Communication Confidence.